Well, I'm so happy to be here today and um, I'm gonna be really honest about my story and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna share my journey and I'm gonna just be honest, it's not the easiest thing for me to do, but um, it, it, it's, it's important. And before I would have let shame get to me and I would have silenced myself and that's what I did for 15 years. I'm 33 and I was 15 years old when I found out about my dad's double life. My mom went down the, the stairs to the basement and she called for me and she called for my brother and my sister and she said, I have something I need to tell you, something really important. Your, your dad is in jail and my brother had the courage to say, for what? And she said, for murder. The next day, I had to go to school. I had to go to high school. And the media was all over it, because um, now as a trial, they're speculating it's not just one murder, it's multiple murders. <laughs> At lunchtime, I went um, to my normal group of friends, and they said, you know, my parents saw your dad on the news last night and um, we're not really supposed to be around you. And that's when I felt guilty. This is really hard for me to share because it's, I felt guilty. I felt guilty that I had trusted him with everything and, and um, I let him close to me. And he took advantage of that. What was sad for me looking back is I couldn't be there for my siblings. It was survival. I had to fight for my life. I'm sorry that I'm crying because I just remember that pain. And I'm so thankful for where I am right now. And I'm glad I can share the story with you. But those were the darkest days of my life. And I felt like I didn't have anybody. I need to come to terms with my past and I needed to heal because I had just been surviving all those years. I, I hadn't come to terms that I had worth. I still was believing that I was this small. And um, I reached out, I, I tried to find the right counselor. He said, you know, you got dealt a pretty crappy hand. Um, I thought you, a crappy hand. Yeah, you're right. I didn't have any control. I didn't make these choices. People made these choices and I had to deal with the, the consequences. But now that I'm an adult, I can, I can choose. And what do I want to choose? All of a sudden I was like, I have options. I don't have to, to live in this, you mean? You mean I have freedom to get away from this? That I don't have to live my life in restitution? I mean, he was known as the happy face serial killer and, and, and I remember feeling guilty if I sent a text that had a happy face on it or um, I didn't buy balloons with happy faces. And so now I go and I tell my story to young, young girls around the country and to boys and I go to high schools. And, and like I said, it's not easy to tell my story because I have to remember what happened that night and many nights but I feel like it's worth it because I know I'm not the only one. They say there's one in four women that are being abused or, or will see or witness abuse. And that's not okay with me. I can't believe all this time I thought I was alone in, in what I was going through and to find out that there's a term called domestic violence and dating violence, I didn't know that. And so that's why I'm so passionate about going out and sharing my story. And I'm so thankful to you for hearing my story today. Thank you so much. Thank you.